Thank you for joining us. I'm Yoon Jung Min. We begin with the latest in Vientiane, where President Yoon is engaging in a string of bilateral summits as he attends ASEAN-related meetings. Among his scheduled meetings, eyes are on his first talks with the new Japanese Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba. The summit took place in the late afternoon, and we connect to our correspondent Woo Soo-young to learn about this meeting. Soo-young, we understand that the full detail details aren't out just yet, but we've heard the leaders' opening remarks. What would they have talked about? Good evening, Tong Min. You're right. President Yoon Song Yeol and Japanese Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba began their first ever summit around two hours ago in Laos. Of course, it couldn't be a long meeting, given that it's taking place on the sidelines of the ASEAN-related summit, as one presidential official pointed out. But there are some obvious topics they're likely to have addressed. Data have spoken of the ASEAN Plus, uh, Plus 3 summit, so it's likely Yun and Ashiba may have expanded on that. But more importantly, they, have most, um, they most definitely would have discussed ways to further advance bilateral relations, especially as next year marks the 60th anniversary of normalizing diplomatic ties. President Yun referred to this in his opening remarks. 특히 다가오는 2025년은 한일 국교 정상화 60주년을 맞이하는 해입니다. 양국 관계의 희망찬 미래상을 제시하고 양국 국민들이 양국 관계 도약을 체감할 수 있도록 총리님과 긴밀하게 협력해 나갔으면 합니다. The two leaders may have discussed Yoon's trip to Tokyo or vice versa. They did agree last week during their first phone call to continue the kind of top-level shuttle exchanges Yoon and former Prime Minister uh, Fumio Kishida had engaged in. They also agreed to address North Korea's nuclear threat and common challenges in the Indo-Pacific. Right, so, uh, that was their inter what was their interaction like and what does it tell about the future of the bilateral relationship? Well, I mean, I'd say we've so far seen a positive start. As Yun and Ashiba uh, met, we saw them greet each other quite warmly and also exchange friendly remarks. Now, this one-on-one -on -one summit is really significant as it comes just nine days after the Japanese PM took office, shortly after which uh, um, Yun uh, had called him following U.S. President Biden's phone call to Ashiba. Now, Yun and Ashiba spoke for about 15 minutes on the phone last week, and this indicates that the two neighbors' often rocky relationship can continue to progress in a con constructive, future-oriented way. Yun in 2023 reached out to Tokyo to overcome historical sticking points that soured their ties for decades, sparked by Japan's imperial atrocities. In the months following, uh, he and former Prime Minister Kishida engaged in their so-called shuttle exchange diplomacy, which enabled the two countries to form a trilateral cooperation framework with the United States at Camp David last year. Yun told Ishiba Thursday that he hoped to continue strengthening the bilateral relationship through active and close communication as he had with Kishida, and the new Japanese Prime Minister responded in kind. I intend to carry on and further develop the greatly improved relations between our two countries, which were strengthened by former Prime Minister Kishida and yourself. I also hope to make good use of shuttle diplomacy and work closely with you, President Yoon. As Yun built a great rapport and personal friendship with former Prime Minister Kishida, there's naturally been great interest in how the relationship would play out, personally as well as bilaterally. Most observers I've talked to are rather optimistic, given that uh, the Japanese Prime Minister does have a rather dovish stance when it comes to facing up to Japan's imperial atrocities. And as a security expert and former defense minister, he has a rather Asia-centric approach to diplomacy and geopolitics. Ishiba places a lot of importance on Japan's national identity and philosophy, so I believe he will aim for broader security cooperation between Korea and Japan, rather than just focusing on historical or territorial issues. He'll likely focus on promoting a relationship centered on security cooperation in East Asia. So from what we saw of it, the meeting looks like it's gone rather well and uh, as well as it could go, I would say. But we, of course, have yet to hear the details and I'll be keeping you updated on that, of course, Tongmin. All right. Our senior presidential correspondent, Wu Su-young, thanks for the updates.